Well, good morning and welcome to Grounded. The first question we want to ask you this morning is, are there things in your life that you're ashamed of? I feel like I know how every single one of us would answer this question. Yeah. Um, but there is a writer of one of the greatest hymns of all time, Amazing Grace. Mm. His name was John Newton. And at age 11, he became a sailor. Mm. And he started to get involved in some pretty detestable things in his mm. life. He got involved with the slave trade. He started um, capturing... African natives and selling them into slavery. Mm. And so one day he was on the boat and he was in this terrible storm and he began to fear for his life. Mm. And he picked up a book called The Imitation of Christ and was miraculously converted at that point in his life. Wow. And he went on to write the hymn that we all know as Amazing Grace, which I think is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, but it's neat to see how he didn't allow his past to impact what God was calling him to. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, one of the um, one of my favorite verses um, about God's grace is Ephesians two. Um, I'm going to read that right now, verse eight and nine. <clears throat> For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing; it is the gift of God, Mm. not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And um, in Romans, I believe it's three, Mm -hmm. Paul talks about, um, he he reminds us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And there's other, there's people in the Bible, um, I'm reminded of David. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was a man after God's own heart, but he committed some terrible, he did some terrible, terrible things. Um, committed adultery, committed murder, um, but but God had mercy on him. Yeah, and it didn't keep him stuck. It didn't. You know, God still um, found him usable for yes. his glory. Yes. And, you know, you mentioned Paul, and when you think about Paul and his life, mm-hmm. you know, he was killing Christians. Yes. He was. For the longest time before mm-hmm. he um, gave his life to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And he actually tells us over in Philippians 3, I want to read this verse. Um, it's verses 13 through 14. I'm going to start halfway through 13. He says, But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize in which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Mm. I mean, he lays it out for us right there. That's right. And um, I just think it's really important for us to be reminded when the enemy tries to throw our past in our face or mm-hmm. we start to um, adopt that guilt and that shame again mm-hmm. throughout the course of our life, mm-hmm. that we stand firm on the amazing grace mm-hmm. that we have in Christ Jesus and not allow that to impact the responsibility that we have to Jesus in <clears throat> Excuse me, in the obedience that we have to the Lord. Amen. It was so good. Will yeah. you, so we want to ask you, will you receive God's amazing grace if mm. you haven't already? Again, what is it that you're holding on to, um, to your past or maybe something that is hanging over your head that you just need to um, relinquish to the Lord? Yeah. And allow His grace to consume you yeah. and wash away all that shame. Yes. Will you pray with us? Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your amazing grace. Mm-hmm. Lord, we, we don't deserve it and we did nothing to earn it. But Father, you give it freely and abundantly still each and every moment that we are alive, that we breathe. Father, we thank you so much for loving us, even when we're unlovely. Father, thank you for your amazing grace. Mm -hmm. And Father, may we walk in that today and always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Christmas.